Hey everybody, Aaron with bushhoggingservices.com. I have to admit that I've been neglectful in uh, doing this update. Um, you know, in one of the past videos, which I will link to here, uh, there was I did a video on a customer that canceled the service in the middle of the contract, went with somebody else for various reasons that she made up on the fly and paid the other contractor, you know, basically the balance of what was due and um, you know, got the rest of the property done without complaints of the work that we had done and things of that nature. So I wanted to provide a follow-up uh, on the process because what I ended up doing was I had to take this customer to small claims court. I just wasn't gonna let it go. Uh, it just was, there was enough money involved and she was just really trying to short me. The total bill was 3,500 bucks and it was a lot of work. Um, you know, We had already done a lot of work. There was still a fair amount of work left to do. We, um, you know, and I started to calculate, you know, how much I would have made per hour for myself, uh, not, you know, after taking out miles or mileage, fuel, uh, we rented a zero turn at that time before I owned one, uh, labor costs for the guy that was helping me, things like that. And it was like $2 an hour that, you know, what she had offered, which was $1,500, uh, was going to equate for my time. And, you know, that's just not acceptable. So... Uh, you know, I, I uh, entered into a small claims court claim in the county in which the work was being done, which is here in Florida. She happened to live in um, another northeastern state, you know, like the New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania type area. And, you know, I just wasn't going to accept that she was going to lowball me. So, um, you know, I took her to small claims court. And if you haven't done that process yet, it's not terrible. I was shocked. It was the very first time I've ever done it. I did it by myself. I did it by researching, by calling the clerk of the court to get advice and things like that and went through the process. And, you know, you've got, at least in the process that I went through, you got to send them a letter, uh, notice of intent. Uh, actually, even prior to that, in my case, uh, I, I filed a lien on her property and that wasn't good enough. She that wasn't going to get her to you know to pay uh, you know what she owed. So then I moved to a small claims court and you had to you know send a letter of notice, which was virtually impossible uh, you know with her because she had multiple addresses. She was like you know some kind of shifty person moving around and hiding her address and having a PO box and you know you can't serve somebody with a PO box, which. I suspect she's probably been down this road before, which is why she does things that way. And uh, I actually never served her, but she made a mistake in that um, because you have to do service before the you know the pre-trial uh, negotiation, you know, like where they try to sort things out without going before a judge. Um, so uh, that was scheduled, and I actually just emailed it to her and I said, "Hey, here's our pre-trial conference time, date, address, and you know meeting information," and she showed up. At that point, she was in the process. If she had actually just ignored it, I would have never served her. She would have been able to claim she never knew, and she wouldn't have shown up for the uh, the pretrial conference, and the whole thing would have been thrown out the window. But she didn't know that, so uh, she made that one little mistake, and she may eventually watch this video and kind of understand, you know, what transpired. But uh, so we didn't come to an agreement in the you know the pretrial conference uh, negotiation process. Uh, you know, she was making stuff up and continued to make stuff up throughout the entire process. Uh, it was it was actually pretty interesting to see how somebody will flat out lie about a situation and then also twist the facts um, in a different way. So it was a whole spectrum of you know uh, from complete lying to twisting facts, and um, it was you know. Anyway, it was it was not pleasant overall, but it was an educational process, and I can see how this process is going to be important. And uh, prior to that, you know, even in her case, all the business I did was on a handshake. You know, I never had any problems with the customer, and now I've gone to an agreement. So I wanted to read some of the judge's final judgment that um, that came out of this process. Uh, you know, we met online. The judge was there. Uh, I got a chance to talk. She got a chance to talk. I called a witness, you know, my helper. She called her sister who was around during that time frame. And the judge sat and listened. One of the things that I believe truly helped me was I created this video, um, which I linked to before and I'll link to again here for you. 
and I predicted what was going to happen. And it just played out perfectly. And if the judge was able to watch that, he would have been able to tell I wasn't making this up. I wasn't making false claims, whatever. I made the video describing what I thought was going to happen before she ever tried to lowball me on the price. You know, just kind of thinking, you know, who she is and, and that type of thing. And sure enough, it happened. So I, I think I got really lucky in that regard. If you watched it, I don't know. I turned it in as evidence, um, you know, to make my case. And it seems like he, uh, you know, kind of may have watched it. But all right, so I'm going to read you the actual final judgment here, just for your knowledge and kind of understanding of what this judge looked at. Uh, hopefully I won't say her name. So this cause having come to be heard at the non-jury trial on the 21st day of June, 2022, the court having taken testimony from the parties, reviewed exhibits and documentation, the court makes the following findings of fact. The parties into a, entered into a valid oral contract for the plaintiff, me, to clear brush and trees from the defendant uh, at a property. The contract price was $3,500 to be paid upon completion of the job. The plaintiff began the job, cleared approximately 50% of the property, which consisted of well over 50% of the anticipated work. The half that I did was actually much more complicated, uh, more debris and obstacles and junk and things like that. So it was actually over 50% of the work. The remaining acreage was just straight, easy bush hogging. So it was no big deal. In reliance with the court, the plaintiff expended time and materials as well as renting equipment to perform the work contracted for. The defendant unilaterally terminated the agreement and paid someone else to complete the work, which the plaintiff had not uh, had not had time to complete. There was no evidence that at any time that the plaintiff was unwilling or unable to complete the work at the price contracted for. While the defendant testified that the plaintiff was not timely Completing the work, the court finds that the plaintiff was performing the work in a timely fashion and there was no evidence other than the defendant's self-serving testimony that there was a time limit on the work. It is now, uh, therefore, ordered in a judge that the court finds that the plaintiff, um, which is me, in the amount of $3,500 principal plus court costs in the amount of $409 for a total of $3,909 which shall bear interest at the legal rate for which um, let execution issue. The defendant shall complete and provide to the plaintiff within 30 days from the date of the final judgment, Florida Small Claims Court rules attached here to done and ordered. And she actually paid immediately. I was shocked that I didn't have to go through some other process to get her to pay, but she paid up and we basically just walked away. Uh, the unfortunate part is, I, you know, she's not a... I, Outside of the situation, we got along fine. She was nice. Uh, we had a nice, you know, initial working relationship. I actually don't dislike her. I just dislike her particular behavior around this situation. So uh, this is how it played out. Uh, plus side is it taught me how valuable a zero term mower was. And I went and bought one after that and uh, have used it to really increase productivity. So uh, hopefully you don't get in this situation. Having a written agreement is something that certainly can't hurt. It lays some of the things out. And uh, if I had that going into this, it would have been hands down, you know, a, a win without any testimony, in, you know, unless I had done something wrong, which I hadn't. So hope, hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully you're not uh, going to end up in my situation. Uh, you know, good luck to you. And if you got any questions or anything, you know, just hit me up in the comment below. If you want a copy of the agreement that I use now, I'll be glad to send you one. You can change it up uh, on your own and, and make it your own and you know, hopefully it protects you. So thanks for watching and uh, have a great day.